Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Oh, my goodness, man. It's hard to believe that we sit here right now at this moment. We are 30 days, 49 minutes, and 45 seconds away from kickoff of the 2022 season. And today, friends, today, that's it. The last practice in Oxnard happened today in pads. Now, they head to Denver where they'll practice Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday have their first scrimmage. It's on. The season is here. And today, I, I was actually happy to hear about this today because today, what we saw was we saw um, the Cowboys, they call it chippy. I actually call it uh, getting pissed off, okay? You know, at some point, you get tired of playing against your own guys, and you end up really just getting just hangry, so to speak. And so you saw our players kind of get into it. And I was happy that John Ridgway, the mountain, the eclipse, the big guy, ooh-wee. I tell you what, the more I see of him, the more I love it, okay? He is, I'm taking no shit from anybody. And also Sam Williams out there kind of getting a little bit scuffled into it too. And I'm happy that now we're going to go start hitting some other guys. So we don't do damage to our own people and things. I love that these guys are going after it in practice. I love it. I 100% love it. Now, here's what's getting interesting. There's been so much talk about, you know, the Cowboys, they need a receiver and things. Hell, Philly 500 saying that Rhaegar is getting a lot of tension, that he's that things are heating up, that even the Dallas Cowboys are interested. Cowboys ain't interested in your garbage. We are not interested. Keep that stank to yourself. We don't want him, Philly. Keep dreaming that somebody's going to give up compensation for the bum. That's stiff. And there's a curse now of your first round picks. And one of the reasons why I might not be quite as scared of Jordan Davis, but I'll go into that in a later time, you know, cause it seems like for some reason, all of your first round picks have a lot of promise, but something mysteriously thing always happens to them. You know what I mean? Devonte Smith now has missed another practice, another four practice. I think he's missed four of nine practices already. Can't seem to get on the field. Or is it six and nine? Yeah. Anyway, the best thing the Dallas Cowboys can do for the wide receivers and for the team is to get back to running. So here's the thing that's interesting. And I know people will say, well, you know, it's because Dak Prescott sucks that they got to have a running game. Take a look at Roger Staubach. Take a look at Troy Aikman. Those glory days of the Dallas Cowboys. Great quarterback, great running attack, great defense. They all led to Super Bowls. You've not seen great quarterback, no running game for the Cowboys ever lead them to a Super Bowl. That's why we have the all-time leading rusher. Duh, that was part of the three Super Bowls. Anyway. Anyway. For those out there that have said Zeke Elliott is done, Basically, he needs to go to retirement home. He's not the same guy. They've baffled you with bullshit by telling you that last year he only had 53 yards a carry. Yeah, but he only averaged 13 carries a game, the lowest by far in his career, as opposed to 23 carries in his rookie year. Now, I'm not going to say that he's the same guy that he was, but I tell you, 2020, I don't know that you can really count that season because losing Lyle Collins for the season he even started and having an undrafted rookie through a COVID year starting at right tackle and losing Tyler, Tyron Smith uh, two weeks, uh, two games in and then starting Badish as your center. I don't know that there was many people that were going to run behind that line, especially not having a passing threat after Dak Prescott went down. And by the way, he did have COVID before this, just before the season started. So you had all those things last year before the PCL, he was averaging 5.3 yards a carry. In fact, against the Eagles, which I think actually had a really good defensive line, 
He averaged 5.3 against them in 90 yards. Not exactly chump change. In that game, we rushed for almost 160 yards on the ground. And it made it that much easier for the quarterback, and we won 42-21. Yeah, that was an ass kicking. So through the first eight games of the season, even with four of those, Zeke Elliott had a tour PCL. We still averaged 4.8 yards a carry with Zeke. Now, I saw Zeke this past week. He looked good. He looked like he didn't look like he's an old man ready for a wheelchair. And here's a clip real quick of Zeke actually running today. And I saw a lot of good stuff, good stuff like this when I was there last week. Just take a look at it. Boom, hitting the hole. Boom, duck, ducking and weaving, ducking and weaving. Now, I know we're not going full speed and stuff, but that doesn't look like a guy who is suffering right now. I, it, it just does not look like a guy that's suffering. Um, so the question now is about the receiving core. And for me, if the Cowboys can get the running game going, that will make Tony Pollard that much more effective in the passing game. And I believe that the 12 personnel will help you buy time. And for those out there that's saying, because I, I remember last night somebody was saying um, that, what, how did they term it? But basically, they were calling 12 personnel like the idiot offense. Well, I got to tell you, Bill Belichick, when he had Aaron Hernandez and Gronk, without having great wide receivers, carried that right to a Super Bowl. And I believe the Cowboys will use a lot of that. But you know what? Don't listen to me. Let's actually listen to Jimmy Johnson, who was on Colin Cowherd, the Hall of Fame coach in sports analysis, who can probably tell you more about our wide receiver core and why we're going to be okay. Let's take a listen in. It, it is interesting about who to pay and who not to pay. And you were kind of... You were, you were really kind of the godfather of this, is that um, you look around the NFL now, you can't pay maybe a guard, a linebacker, a tight end. I mean, the game's changed, Jimmy. you got to pay your quarterback, your left tackle, an edge rusher, a corner, and a weapon. And I, I kind of I, I look at some of these teams like Dallas, and they're like, we're going to let Amari go, and we're going to let Cedric Wilson go. And Jimmy, I'm like, okay. That feels like to me in 2022, I don't know if I could be outbid for both those guys. I don't know if I love that move. Your thought? Well, you know, I, I'm concerned also, you know, about the wide receivers and uh, not having Mari Cooper, you know, there. But, you know, he missed a lot of time. He missed a lot of games uh, at times in critical situations. He wasn't on the field, and I think that's one reason why they were willing to, to part with him. Uh, and they like some of the young guys. And now the problem is they're going to have some guys that are going to be unavailable at the start of the season because of injury. James uh, but they still are probably the most talented team uh, in the NFC East. And so uh, Philadelphia has gotten better. Maybe, maybe they're closer. Uh, but they should still win the division. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's this New England thing is weird. That listen, <laughs> okay. it's hard. We know Belichick's smart. All right, so you got Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson saying that yeah, Philly, Philly got better. Philly got better, but Dallas is still the most talented team out there. Hmm. All right, is Jimmy Johnson a homer? With all the things that Jerry Jones has said. Hmm. I'm going to take his word for it over a Dan Orlowski. I, I just am. That guy right there, Jimmy Johnson, it's a travesty the way he's been treated by Jerry Jones. And the fact that Jerry, through all of his efforts, hasn't won dick without Jimmy Johnson should be all you need to know. So anyway... That's all I got to say about that. I'll have more later on on Philly 500 and the curse of the first round picks that they have. They've got 13 players right now that are injured. Um, it's interesting listening to Philly 500. He thinks I'm actually scared of them. I would actually say after going to Washington training camp that I might be a little bit more concerned about the Washington Commanders than the Philadelphia Eagles.
Just saying. But you know what? We know Philly 500 is right. He's always right. He literally is always right about everything. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't Hurts. handle the truth. Hurts. The pass. Throws. Pick. Horrible pass. Oh, my God. Stupid! 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 